of all of our praises. Hallelujah. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yeah. That's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Well, good morning, everybody. I trust that your trust is in God and that you are not tripping. God is good all of the time. Even when we don't feel like it, God is still good. Because that's his nature. Well, it's a great day. It's a good day to be alive. It's a great day to come together to celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We're going to turn to God right now, and then we're going to get on into the word. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you are going to do. We thank you that your word is true and that you will speak to our heart this day and bring to us what we need to hear so that we may order our conduct aright. Thank you for Jesus, for his precious shed blood at Calvary, for his death, burial, and resurrection on the third day and for our redemption for those of us that have put our trust in him. Now, Lord, by your eternal word, this day speak to our heart, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I want you to turn in your Bible to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come the first falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. I want to talk to us today about the falling away. Now, this pestilence that we are presently going through has only served to cause a portion of that great falling away. That great falling away. That is falling away before the second coming of Jesus Christ. There shall be a falling away. That's what the word says. There's going to be apostasy. People departing from the truth of God's word. Now I'm not the judge of anybody. I try not to. I've been guilty of that, but I try not to. But what I'm saying is this, we have to be able to look around and ask ourselves, what in the world is going on? Churches used to be filled with people. Programs used to be held and people would flood into it, but now there's a such thing out there as we know to be a pestilence. And because the pestilence is in the earth realm, a lot of people, either they have used that as an excuse to not come to church, to not praise the Lord, to not gather in to where the saints are, whatever it is, it seemed like the pestilence is serving as a part of the great falling away. The great falling away. The falling away and all of the killing that we see and what comes on the news every time is on. Somebody else have killed somebody else. Yesterday a man about 60 years old in a car and somebody came up to his car window and he shot out of the car I don't know if the man died or not, but he shot that man. 
that is the what we are trying to understand and wrap our minds around this is what it is it is the mystery of lawlessness this lawlessness is running rampant not only here in Shreveport Bolger it's worldwide and we have to keep on reminding ourselves that God's word is true. Every bit of it is true. And the Lord has, I would say, delayed his coming so that more souls can get saved. It's a lot of people right now that used to come to church. You can't pay them to come. They are that far out and don't realize that they have become a part of the great falling away. There is the time that is now up on us where the truth of God's word is constantly unfolding more now than ever before. It was before day this morning that the Lord gave me this word on the falling away. And the falling away. You have to be careful sometimes that that old tired feeling, I don't feel like it. You, you can't afford that. You, you, can't, you can't afford it. They, they ain't the only thing. Why, why we get tired and don't want to come to church and, and get tired and go to work? It's something wrong. And people that claim to know the Lord and never come to church, it's something wrong. It is a falling away. There are some people that used to be around 25 years ago. Now, I've been here 40 years at this church. And a whole lot of people, for whatever reason, they don't like the choir. They didn't like such and such. They don't like the ushers. They don't like this. Finding reasons to get away from God. Finding reasons to back up and quit. A lot of times, and I ain't to judge nobody, but a lot of times, them people ain't born again. Because there's something inside of the believer that keeps on keeping on. It doesn't matter who comes or goes. They're going to be found somewhere with at least a right hand raised up. Because we realize, those of us that are born again, realize that we cannot make it without the Lord. We cannot. It is impossible to make it without the Lord. And even if we have people around us talking crazy, are you going to church? No, I ain't going. Well, I am. Because the Lord has been good to me. The Lord has been real good to me. And I owe him my service. The times that we are now living in, these are the last and evil days. These are the dangerous times. That's why all of the killing, all of the raping, all of the robbing, all of the stealing, because it's already written. And nobody on this planet is going to stop what's written. It's already written. So today you need to check your heart. And you need to ask yourself, is this the first time this year I've been to church? Well, then what in the hell is your problem? And who are you? Now, you may think I'm being rude, but I'm not. Because I got much scripture here that we're going to take a look at today. And some people are falling out of church, falling away. For whatever those reasons may be, they are not good enough. Because blood has been shed for everybody. Christ died for the sins of the whole wide world. And those of us who have received him owe him our allegiance. And if it's not but one person left on the planet going to church, it ought to be you. Because God has been good to you. And God has been good to me. All these old lame excuses, but ain't no lame excuse when it comes to going out there to get that paycheck. It's not. People dead tired and dragging it all the way to work and have a little hit <laughs> at you. I ain't going to church for a month. 
Well, you have to ask yourself, are you really saved? Are you really born again? In 2 Thessalonians, in that third verse, it says, let no man deceive you. Now, now that's something that Jesus leans heavily upon. Because after the Lord makes an assertion or a statement, it always comes back to a man. It always comes back. He warns us about people. I don't care if you're married to one of them. He warns us about people. Beware that no man deceive you. That's a constant thing that the Lord has said. So when you accepted Jesus, if you have accepted him, it doesn't matter if your wife go to church or your husband go to church. That's a charge that you have and it's something that you ought to enjoy. Period. And so the Lord constantly put in his word, let no man deceive you. And that's woman too. Because woman came out of man. What does it mean to be deceived? It means to be deceived. It means to have your mind all twisted up and to have your thought pattern uh, directly in opposition to what God says and who God is. Lying and conniving and, and all the rest of this stuff. I don't have to read no almanac to try to find out what's going on in the world. I got a Bible. The Bible is God's eternal word. And I don't care if you like it or don't like it or if I like it or don't like it, it ain't changing nothing. God is going to deal with everybody that don't like his word, everybody that have had a hard speech or sentence against Jesus, against this gospel, God is coming back to take care of all of that. And I tell you something else, you can't use no preacher to try to explain why you cutting up. Uh uh that ain't the way this go. Every one of us, according to this word, shall give account of himself to the Lord. So here Jesus, in the word that he gives to Paul, let no man deceive you by any means. Don't let it happen. And those of you that are scared to love your pastor, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be. Someone whom God has given his eternal word to share with his church and, 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 and you shake it about your love for that individual. There's something wrong with you. We didn't get out of bed, out of bed early this morning to come out here to be shucking and jiving. We came out here, I'm here because there's a word here. Let no man deceive you. That's your uncle, your cousin, your husband, your niece, your nephew, whoever they are. And there are so many people all been out of shape right now because maybe one of them is born again, the other one is not, and you better not say anything about that person that's not born again. Why not? We have to realize that the Lord that woke us up this morning is right in the middle of this audience. He knows everything about everybody. So don't let no man deceive you. You made a commitment to the Lord. You told the Lord you thanked him for saving you and, and, and you got on the road with him. Some of you all have been in church now for over 40 years. Some 50 years. And I applaud you. And I encourage you to keep on going. Amen. Don't you let nobody deceive you. Because whoever it is that you allow to deceive you, they didn't wake you up this morning. Amen. They didn't start you on your way. It was Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let no man deceive you by any means.
period. You may be the only one still hanging in your Sunday school class. Well, fine. Be there. God rewards faithfulness. So don't let no man deceive you. So if you don't like God, go on about your business. I love him. And I'm going to go on about my business. And we're going to see how it all shakes out when the Lord comes back. Mm -hmm. We're going to see how it all shakes out when the Lord comes back. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day. Now, you, you got to be careful because now we got a day that we're looking at. That day, listen, shall not come except there come a falling away first. Pestilence. There it is. The falling away must come before Jesus comes back. Yeah. That's what we see. That's what's going on, everybody. But it ain't stopping nobody from going to work. It's not. And, and that's what I, I, I pray to God for all of us that are here. That you don't get your mind in that lazy state of these lazy people that are talking to you. You don't want to do that. Because a commitment to the Lord is forever. And it should be done out of joy and thankfulness and gratitude and appreciation in everything. So if somebody got a problem going to church and they in your ear, you need to get them out of it. And you need to use that as an opportunity to testify. Let me tell you how good God has been to me. Let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. And I'm not going to let you throw no cold water on my fired up commitment for Christ. So if you don't want to go to church, don't go. But you ain't going to stop me. Cause a charge to keep I have and a God to glorify. Period. He saved me. Now if he didn't save you, it's because you didn't call him. But I'm not going to let you in your unbelief cause my fire and my fervor for the Lord to turn around because you ain't going to church. Now, that ain't going to happen. Because you don't know and you weren't there when the Lord reached down and saved me. So if you don't want to go to church, then, you know, just like anything else, don't go. But you ain't going to convince me that I should not go. It's not going to happen. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Everybody say first. A falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, the revelation of Satan and who he is and what he's doing, we all get tired of that. On the news, somebody else got killed, somebody got raped, somebody got robbed. That is, that happens to be among us, the mystery of lawlessness. That's the devil getting real busy, whether it's at midnight or whether or not it's 12 o'clock in the daytime. That's what we are seeing. And that's what our eyes need to be open to understand. Even the avenues of our mind need to be, that ain't God right there that's killing that person, shooting them, and, and, and this and that. And that's not God, that's, that's the devil. That is Satan. And in the midst of all this that's going on, God is still keeping you. Out of all this killing and all the rest of this stuff, God is still keeping us. We got out of our bed this morning, put on our clothes, and ended up here. I don't know why you're here, but I'm here because I'm grateful. I'm, 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 I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm really glad. 
because he didn't have to do it, but he did. So before the second coming of Jesus, now oftentimes and several times along the way, I have preached on the rapture. I have articulated the words on the rapture. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven. That means comes down. He's going to do it with a shout. And ain't nobody going to stop him. Nothing is going to hinder the second coming of Jesus. Now think about this. When the Lord went away, he was seen of above, of above 500 people. And the Lord went up into heaven itself. He went up there. Now, we were not here physically, but it happened. And his second coming is going to happen the same way. He's coming back. So he says in the middle of all that, don't you let no man deceive you by any means. That is very important. Well, you know, it's so many Bibles now. You know, they got a new Bible every year. I don't care. I got my Bible. So, so, so the, the falling away if you notice how chronologically it is set up first. That's the chronologue, first. That's going to come first, the falling away. Do not hang with these people that have their own reasons for not coming to church. And they used to sit next to you at church when, before the pandemic showed up. Now it has taken them out. And now they're messing around with your head. Mm -hmm. Uh uh. Your commitment to Christ ought to be stronger than any pandemic, any naysayer, any jive turkey. Period. That's the way I've been all these years, almost 50 years now. I don't care. I love the Lord and I love people. But a person not going to church, that's, that, that's what you want to do. I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You must stay focused. Amen. You must remember the one who redeemed us. You must remember the price that was paid for us. And you, we must also remember that we're going to a better place. Amen. Where the wicked will cease from troubling. And the weary will be at rest. We're going to a better place. So we can't get caught up down here with the way that the world is acting and the things that they are saying. And oh yeah, they used to... See, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people go to various churches every Sunday morning. A lot of people. But they never make a commitment to Christ. And the question is, okay, so what are you waiting for? If you're looking for a perfect church, you'll never come. Because ain't no such thing as a perfect church. It was perfect until you showed up. <laughs> it was perfect until you showed up. Mm. Now, this mystery of lawlessness, and you have to ask yourself a question, now, what, now why did he break in there and kill that person? Or, or, or why this or why that? It's a mystery. And it's the mystery of lawlessness. Yeah. All that stuff is put on display by the devil. And I know a lot of you, if, if you're like I am, 
to a degree, you, you know, you, you, you look at the news and you, you hear all this stuff and you say, doggone it. It's gotten, it's gotten so bad even now, and you notice. And this is the part that, that just chaps my hide, and I don't even have a horse to ride on. It's always these Negroes. Always these Negroes. And it's always happening in the hood. It's almost like uh, whoever is bringing these guns into the black community and they're giving these guns to ignorant people that don't even know which way is up and don't know how to use a gun so they target people that look like them. And they keep on doing that. Because they can't shoot. They don't even know the purpose of a gun. And I just believe with all of my heart, I can't prove it, but I believe it, that there are people that are designated to go into these communities and kill these people. So it's a twofold effort. But nevertheless, when you're dead, you're dead, whether it's a bullet or an AT wheeler. So it needs to stop. But unfortunately, it's not. It's going to get worse from here. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And that's the fourth word in this third verse, deceive. So we're up against it. And, and now it's time to tell somebody about Jesus Amen. and what he has done for you. And encourage them to open their hearts up and accept Christ. Christ is the only way. He's the only truth. And he's the only life. Now, all right, moving right along. I want you to go to Luke chapter 17. The gospel according to Luke. Chapter 17. Now I was minding my own business before day this morning. And here comes the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost said, I want you to preach today on the falling away. I said, okay. That's good. The falling away. L look around you right quick. Help me out. Look. You see any empty chairs? Mm -hmm. That's what this message is. Now watch this. In Luke's gospel, chapter 17, in verses 28 through 30, and then verse 32. Verse 28, Luke 17 Jesus is speaking. Also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now look at verse 30, 32. Remember Lot's wife. Now wow, that's, that's powerful right there. Remember Lot's wife? Yeah. You know Lot. Lot was over yonder and being where he was, sitting in the seat of power, influence, and authority. And then all of a sudden, the word came to get up and get out of Sodom. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, as Lot and his wife started out of Sodom. All of a sudden, Mrs. Lot, she was 
when you would look at her and, and, and allow me to, to handle this, this little allegory right quick. When you would look at Miss Lot, oh, she went to church, if there was such a thing in those days. She lifted her hands. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. In those days. She even made it to midweek sometime in those days. But the word Lord came said, now, Lot, I want you to get up and I want you to get out of Sodom. Mm -hmm. He got up, he got to moving, and his wife, Miss Lot, was also traveling out of Sodom because God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. There was destruction coming. And this man, Lot, offered this divine opportunity, divine opportunity to Lot and his whole family. So as they got ready to get out of Lot because God was going to destroy that place, as they were getting ready to get out, now, now all things have been equal when you would look at her, oh, that's Sister Lot. She's deep into what she's into, just like the rest of us. That's just a lot. Is that right? But when they started out of Sodom and Gomorrah, all of a sudden something happened. She turned into a pillar of salt. Right there she stood, and she was no longer a person person, but she was a pillar of salt. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Ain't that, that's in verse 32. So what are you coming to church for? That's a good question, ain't it? Well, it's, it's just my habit. That ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. Are you really sure that you're born again? Because other than that, you don't do nothing. You have to be careful. Everybody that say, Lord, Lord, ain't the Lord's. Remember Lot's wife. Lot was saved, but his wife wasn't. Do we have that situation among us? You say, but your husband ain't. Or you say, but your wife not. What's going to clarify who's who? The rapture. Everybody is not going out in the rapture. Only the born again believers. Anyone who's not born again will be left behind to deal with the devil, the beast, and the false prophets. Well, well, Pastor, uh, this is Sunday morning. We need to be shouting and rejoicing and turning over two chairs. Well, you can if you know you're born again and you're waiting on the Lord's return. Other than that, it's going to be bad, man. It's going to be it's going to be bad. And what's going to be so terrible about it? Can't nobody stop the Lord. I give you case in point. It ain't the Lord, but it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's an example of, of what's happening that seemingly cannot be stopped. That's Vladimir Putin. Huh? Vladimir is all out there. Yeah. And right now, it appears as though no nation can stop him. Vladimir Putin. United States want to send them some missiles, but they can only go across the street. 
Yeah, you, you know it's true. Ain't nobody messing with that, that, that mad man. Now, that's a bad example, but it's a true example of when the Lord comes back. Ain't nobody going to be able to stop him? Can you imagine somebody standing up talking about, look, I'm a Methodist. Who, who, who are you? That ain't going to work. I am the Lord. The creator of heaven and earth. And died on that cross. And you decided that it wasn't worth your time to receive me. So now you go to hell. Remember Lot's wife? She was turned into a pillar of salt. Never made it out. Because her heart was there. Oh, Pastor, well, you know, uh, I'm a member of a sorority, and uh, so we got some crawfish coming up Saturday. And we got some plate dinners. I'm going to be there. Well, you know, the church is, is, is thinking about getting Brother Bill and everybody going out and uh, passing out Bible tracts. Oh, I ain't, I ain't doing that. Okay. Now we know. Know what? We know. The Lord's work in business, it seemed to be, is so lightly taken. And what God is calling for from every one of his children is a total lifetime commitment forever. Because we're going to be with him forever. Ain't no more sweating and all that in, in, in these clothes and all that. It was 103 degrees out there yesterday. And I just believe that the Lord has a unique way of sending people a signal. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I just believe the Lord is sending signals. Now it's 103 degrees out there. How hot is hell? 200 million degrees. So remember Lot's wife. She probably had a church association probably was connected to this and connected to that. But she didn't know the Lord. She didn't know the Lord. So everybody that's at the church ain't in the church. Because you come to church and sit down on the seat don't mean you're born again. You must be born again. Now, now I don't know about anybody else in here, but I, I'm telling you a little bit about me. I believe the rapture is next. So I ain't got no time to be shucking and jiving and playing church. Mm -mm. So therefore, take heed to the word because it's true. Now, this is the call from the Lord this morning. It's found in Revelation chapter 2. The book of Revelation chapter 2. And I'm just going to read probably the first five verses or, five or six verses in Revelation chapter 2. Take heed that no man deceive you. Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 through seven. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them who are evil. 
and thou hast tried them who say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from where thou art fallen. Now here we are, fallen again. And repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy lampstand out of his place except thou repent. But this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Return to your first love. Get back in Sunday school. Get back involved in the things of the Lord and let the things of the world go on the way they're going. Our commitment to Christ is greater than our commitment to the place we go and make our money. But somewhere and somehow, people have put their jobs above the church. We all know we need money. But it ain't to be worshipped. God is. God is. And, and, and let, me, let me put a pen right here. Everything we do in the Lord's service, it ought to be done with a whole lot of joy. Whole lot of peace in believing. Because it's the Lord. We must not lose respect for him. We must not turn aside from his ways and what he has told us to do. Verse 5, remember therefore from where thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy lampstand out of his place except thou repent. That's what the Lord said. I had a conversation not too long ago with an individual and you know I was talking about what the Lord had called me to do and oftentimes what the Lord tell me to tell his people sometimes his people at least three of y'all don't agree with it and it became real clear to me I'm not here to please man. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. No. Here to please the Lord. So it's, it's just like this. If you don't hear what I'm saying, and you take your Bible home and read it, it's going to say what you didn't like to hear me say in the first place. It's God's word. So, all of us, need to return to our first love. You remember how it was when you got saved and you knew Jesus and you just couldn't keep your mouth shut. You was telling somebody about what great things God has done for you. Now, nobody get a word. Why? Because something has changed in you. So the Lord said, return to your first love. Oh, yeah. You just love just being in Sunday school, sitting on the edge of the chair. I got something else to say. I, I want to say this. I want to say this. Now, I, I, think, I think evidently what has happened in our generation is that people think that having church is man's idea. Now, God, God set this up. So that you as a believer and myself as a believer so that we can have company and fellowship. 
And we ought to love the brethren. We ought to love the fellowship. We ought to love the Lord. And we ought to repent. Because the Lord knoweth those that are his. Now one last thing. You remember when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? You remember when that happened to you and how glad you were? It's been a minute for me, but I'm still glad. And I'm saying that to say this. We need to keep the things of the Lord always on top. Always on top. Because he's always on top. But some of us have hung around with the same old jive turkeys. They ain't going nowhere. They don't want to go nowhere. Except something in the world. And when it comes to us wanting to go to church and doing what we need to do. They want to throw a cold blanket on that like that doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't matter? No, it don't matter. It does matter. Some of y'all in here, like I do, love the Lord. Love life. Glad to be alive. Good to know the Lord. That cannot be replaced. And I ain't going to let nobody from from Allendale or Lakeside or nowhere else come and get in my head about the Lord to try to pull me away from my Savior and Lord. That ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's time to stand up and stand out. It is. Jesus shouldn't be a uh, a second lover. Mm -mm. So I just believe that, that, that we're going to do what we need to do. Last verse of scripture, Romans chapter 10. Romans 10. Anybody in here loves the Lord? I don't hear you. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Now notice this. Brethren, my heart's desire. It came from way down deep in my heart. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. They got a zeal for God, but they're ignorant. It's not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, see now that's a problem, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Christ is the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Ain't no bringing no more animals and all that. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness not to three people, but to everyone that believe it. So when you came to Jesus and I came to Jesus and accepted Jesus at face value as being the Lord and the Redeemer, the one who died, the one who was buried, and the one whom God raised from the dead the third day, and we accepted him, that was real good. Because the Lord has spared our lives it is, you know, we didn't even know what we were doing, but the Lord kept us and got us to that place in front of Christ to receive him. But see, they being ignorant of God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? It's a person. It's Jesus Christ. They being ignorant of God's righteousness, they have... Because they are ignorant of that righteousness, they have not submitted themselves unto God's righteousness. Christ is the righteousness of God. And if you have received him today as your personal Lord and Savior, your eternity is already fixed. You're going to be on Golden Streets one of these days. 
we're going higher than the stars in the sky. We're going up. That's a promise from God. The rapture is next. But what's happening right now is the falling away. So you have to be careful. This ain't like, okay, I, I, I ain't going to church. I'll, I'll be back in 15 years. You probably won't get back. Today is the day of salvation. And right now is the acceptable time. So I don't, I don't take my walk with Jesus lightly. I'm not perfect. And you're not either. But it's that commitment that's going to carry us up out of here. No man knows the day or the hour that the Son of Man shall come. But he's coming. So, let all of us heed this warning because it's what we need to do. And I want to conclude like this. Go back to 2 Thessalonians where we started. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now there are some verses in here that need to clarify the times that we are now living in and the times that are coming. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, key in on verses 6 and 7. The word says, and now you know what restraineth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That's all the killing and stealing, all that stuff you see it on TV is already working. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now hindereth, I love that part right there, will continue to hinder until he be taken out of the way. Now what in the world is that? <laughs> what in the world? It's real simple. In my head. The mystery, verse 7, of iniquity doth already work. There you got all your killing and your stealing, your robbing and your raping. All of that is wrapped up right there in verse 7. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now hindereth will continue to hinder. Oh, man. That means, he, who is he that hindereth? It's the Holy Ghost. Man, if the Holy Ghost wasn't in the earth realm right now, everybody in Allendale would be wiped out. He's hindering it. Giving people time to come to Christ. Giving people time to be born again. And they just keep right on forsaking the Lord. Don't go to church. Not interested. They got a worldly lifestyle. They live in the world. They think the world is it. Our job from the Lord, we've been called to go out there and convince them that the world ain't it. Christ is it. So who's hindering? Stopping so many more people from being killed every day, the Holy Ghost. He is the one that's hindering. He's the one that's stopping stuff from being worse than what it is. And you mean to tell me the Holy Ghost stopping all this stuff or slowing it down has given you another chance that never accepted Jesus today to get saved and, and, and now you got a problem. What's your problem? Don't you know you're leaving here? Don't you know if you have not accepted Christ, you're not born again? And do you know if you're not born again, you have no place with God? And if you know you have no place with God, then you have no place in the rapture either. So today is the day of salvation. The best thing you can do is to come to Christ. Matter of fact, that's the only 
thing that's going to stand when the world is on fire. That decision to come to Christ. All right. Let me move on and conclude this. Now look at verses 8 and 9. So in, in order for us to see it, I'm going to start with verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That's the devil and all this stuff we see on TV and, and, and these people killing people. For the mystery, somebody say the mystery of iniquity. That iniquity there is lawlessness. Lawlessness. For the mystery of lawlessness doth already work only he. Now, he is a person. And it may be a little bit of challenging to wrap our mind around the fact that the Holy Ghost is a he. Mm -hmm. Sure is. That's why Jesus said when he, the spirit of truth has come. He is a spirit. All right. Uh-huh. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked one, that Satan, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The devil is in trouble. When the Lord show up, it's going to be so bright in the devil is darkness. And then in the darkness is going to be able to stand in the light. Verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. The devil is going to show up. And Jesus is going to show out. So all this stuff that we're seeing and hearing about on TV, that's that spirit of lawlessness. Those of us that are born again, it, it's going to, this is a weird statement, but it's true. Okay, I'm born again. So if somebody show up and kill me, I'm not going to say they did me a favor because I ain't ready to go. But they did me a favor. Because God's people cannot be destroyed. We have an eternal life. And that eternal life is with Jesus. But all this stuff that the devil is doing, and we see it on TV and we keep hearing it, it's going to get worse. That's why people that are in your family that need the Lord, you need to talk to them. You really need to talk to them. You need to reason with them. You need to ask God to give you the words to say to them. Because it's soul saving time. But to those of us that are born again. We're not a part of the falling away. That falling away. Are those that are not born again. And the pandemic has brought. That great revelation to truth. So if the whole church meets together on a Wednesday night and there's not even 50 people here that could be the whole church in this place. Because the one thing about it, God ain't all caught up in these numbers. He's caught up in his people. So whatever you are doing, or whatever you do, make sure that Christ is in the midsection, the intersection of your life. And that your life is glorifying God because of your actions, your words, and your deeds. Love the Lord and do good. And you're going to do good. If you love the Lord and do good. Amen. Well let's get on our feet. Let's praise the Lord. I know. <laughs> praise the Lord. The second coming. The second coming. The falling away first and then the second coming. 
I want to thank God for all of you that tuned in today on YouTube and pray that the word has been a blessing to you and by God's grace we'll see you again the next time. Have a good day today. Amen. Amen. Well, God is good, everybody. Anybody here love him? It's been put on my heart today to, to, to say a simple prayer for everybody that's here.